Today, we are comparing two really good drones. What makes them great drones is everything you get for the price. With the DJI Spark at $400 and the Parrot Bebop 2 at $300, they are arguably the best GPS drones you can get at each price point. The Hubson Xeno may have something to say about that once it's released though. Both of these drones are built well, and both are compact in size, but the Spark is half the size of the Bebop 2. The Bebop 2 weighs in at about 500 grams and the Spark at a little over 300 grams, so both require FAA registration. The controller for the Spark, while more compact, has more of a solid feel to it, but both feel good in the hands. Let's get into more of the details now, but first, if you like my videos, please consider subscribing to the channel and don't forget to click the bell, otherwise you may never know when I upload new videos. Alright then, let's get into it. Okay, we're going to start with the Bebop 2, we're going to do our hover test. Um, it's a little bit of wind, I would call it light wind today. And we're not going to go very high right now. I'm going to go up maybe 10 feet or so and just let it hover. All right, let's get in the air. All right, I'm just going to leave it there. And we'll just uh, check it out for about 10, 15 seconds. did move to the left it's moving to the left a little but it is essentially holding its position it looks like it's coming back near me it definitely came backwards some okay so that's how the bebop Two did. Okay, let's go ahead and check the hover for the DJI Spark. Let's go ahead and get in the air. And we're gonna go up about 10 feet here. There we go. And we're just going to see what it does in this light wind. Okay, as expected, it is performing better than the Bebop 2. It is drifting the same direction, so the wind patterns, the, uh, the flight controller there is fighting this wind and causing both drones to kind of drift to the left, but the Spark is doing a whole lot better than the Bebop 2 did. And the Bebop 2 did well, but this one definitely does better okay next what we're going to do is we're going to do kind of a uh, combined test here we're going to test camera quality so we can compare them we're going to test range i'm going to go out about 300 meters in this direction uh, with both drones and then once we get out to 300 meters we're going to initiate return to home and check the return to home accuracy okay so that's what we're going to do all right, I'm going to take it up about 150 feet. That looks good. And we're just going to fly out. And since mine is in feet, I said meters. But we're going to go out to about 900 feet. We'll just call it 900. Oh, you know what? <laughs> I've already exceeded that. That's not far enough. Let's keep going. We'll go out to about 2,000 feet. No break up at all. Let's keep going. Okay, we cut out there at about 2122. 
return to home should initiate in 15 seconds. Okay, it's on its way back. Now you will have this with the Bebop 2. Uh, range is pretty good in areas where there is zero to no, I'm sorry, <laughs> minimal to zero uh, interference. Uh, here at the park, there might be a little interference here. And that's definitely, uh, this is definitely characteristic of the Bebop 2. But we'll see if the spark can match that. I already know that it can. Uh, so we'll go out to 2122 and compare, compare the two. But here it comes. We're looking for return to home accuracy. We'll also use this footage to compare the camera quality between both drones. Here comes the Bebop 2. Okay making its approach almost looks like it overshot it uh, I think it did but it's coming down now and there it is so as you can see it is off by we'll call that three feet okay and as you can see the Bebop 2 does not land when it uh, completes its return to home, it just comes back to the home location and hovers. I did the flight with the uh, Bebop 2 without uh, turning on airplane mode. Now, I'm getting some weak signal messages from the Spark here, so I may have to turn on airplane mode just to do this test because I've been getting some dropouts here. Um, and I usually don't get that kind of thing even when I'm not in airplane mode. So we'll play it by ear here. Uh, I'll take it up and see how it acts. I'm going to start the video camera. And let's go ahead and launch. Take off. The whole point has been updated. Please check it on the map. Okay, let's go up about 150 feet. Okay, there we go. Now I'm gonna go ahead and turn the obstacle avoidance sensors off. Where is it? Where are the sensors? There we are. Okay, I'm gonna turn that off. That way we'll have a little more speed. Okay, and we're just gonna fly out. So we'll be able to check out the camera. see how the gimbal performs. Now this is a two axis gimbal versus the Bebop 2 with the three axis gimbal. And this is going to take a little longer because the Bebop 2 is much faster. I'm able to fly much faster with that one. This one is a little slower. I could put it in sports mode but in sports mode the gimbal does not perform as well. Uh, and that's not what we're testing right now. We'll check out sports mode in a few moments. So we're going out to about 2,200 feet, I think it was, and we should we should do that just just fine. Still have my eyes on the small bird there, keeping my eyes on the screen as well, as well as my eyes on the little spark. Okay, we're about halfway there now. weak transmission but we are gonna push ahead I think we're okay pushing ahead and we can at least say that we have exceeded the range of the Bebop 2 right there is good so what I'm gonna do now is initiate return to home and actually, well, we'll just we'll just do it this way. Should have plenty of battery, and you can see what the gimbal's doing. Looks like it overshot a little bit as well, but 
the spark is usually pretty darn accurate. And it's going to turn to face the direction it was facing when it was when it was launched. So it's doing that now. And it should start its descent. Nice and smooth, making its way down. And I'd say that is pretty close, if not spot on. Yep, looks like it's spot on, right on the pad. Okay, so precision landing is what we've come to expect from DJI, DJI products. Uh, unless it's the DJI Mavic 2. <laughs> but as you can see, the Spark clearly wins the return to home accuracy portion of the test. Okay, next we're going to check the photo quality. Um, now, granted, there is some cloud cover, so the light won't be exact for each flight, for each drone. So keep that in mind. This is the best I can do. I'm not in a laboratory or anything like that. Uh, but we should be able to get a pretty good idea of how the two cameras perform. All right, we're going up to about 150 feet once again. Okay, now I currently have the Bebop 2 in sports mode. Let's uh, let's go into our pilot piloting settings here, and I have everything kicked up: max inclination, everything, tilt speed. The only thing I don't have all the way up is vertical speed and yaw. That's the rotational speed. But for the sake of this test, I'll take vertical speed all the way up. Okay, and we're gonna test the same thing. We're just gonna test top speed. Uh, between the two drones. All right, I'm just going to give it full pitch and we'll watch our readout. 50, 55 feet per second. 55, 56 feet per second. Okay, and I'll put up what that translates into in miles per hour on the screen here. And we are in sports mode. Let's take off. We're going to go up to about 150 feet once again. Full pitch. There we go. Now we're in sports mode. Okay, we have reached 32, 32 miles per hour is what we're doing there. And as you can see, in sports mode, 
the 2X's gimbal does not does not really perform well. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and come around here since it is golden hour. And this time of year, just in case you didn't know, um, at least here in the Midwest, golden hour, we have longer golden hours, okay? Now the days are shorter, but with the sun low in the sky like it is right now, it's that way longer. So what does that mean? That means you get this nice golden hue, this golden color uh, on everything. If that's what you're looking for, take advantage of it uh, during the fall. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into follow me. Your drone is not high enough. Okay, let's get it high enough. And matter of fact, let's send it backwards some as well. Okay, let's just get to going. And, you know, like this, the Bebop 2 doesn't have any, any problems keeping up with you. It's when you start changing directions and distance that the Bebop starts to lose you. So I'm going to gain some altitude here. See what happens. And I'm going to pitch back. Okay. Still follow me. Let's go ahead and orbit. Make sure we have good clearance. As remember, the Bebop 2 doesn't have any side, front, or rear sensors. Okay. Doing well. Okay, it's losing me now. See that? And it found me again. Okay, that's about what to expect. That's, you know, not unusual from what I have experienced with the Bebop 2 over the year of ownership. Okay, now we have the Spark all set up and ready to go. Make a nice box once again. I don't like that box. A little bigger, subject too close. Same kind of warning as with the uh, pair of Bebop 2. Okay, we're gonna hit go. Okay, let's get to stepping. Okay, it's following me. Okay, now, in the same way that you could position the uh, Bebop 2, you can position the B, uh, the uh, Spark the same way. And you saw there, it kind of lost me there for a second. Okay. Kind of circling myself here. And here's what you can do on screen. And you can kind of set a a set speed here. So we're gonna do just a what's that counterclockwise rotation? It keeps losing me for some reason. Not sure why. But what I'm trying to show you is what you can do on screen here. You see this white dot here? You can set it to orbit whatever you're tracking at a certain speed. So we're doing counterclock, no that's clockwise at a 27% rate. We're going to increase that. Okay. All right, let's stop that. So you see you can do that. Okay, I'm gonna get it behind me. Give it some altitude, so it's gonna track, track behind me. Okay, let's go ahead and bring it on around. Every time I move it manually, it loses me. It found me again. Okay, it's having a hard time because of this lighting, I believe. I think that light is giving it some trouble. But just like the Bebop 2, now the Spark is much slower, but it's the same kind of thing. You can do all kinds of maneuvers while tracking your subject. Same deal. So after our detailed look, here's how things break down. The Spark holds a hover better and the return to home accuracy is better. In terms of camera quality, I give the edge to the Spark because it produces more detailed, better exposed images. But I'm giving the Bebop 2 a half point because it has better stabilization in video mode and when flying fast in sports mode. Both have a 1 and 2 thirds CMOS sensor and shoot at 1080p at 30 frames per second, which is their highest resolution and frame rate. 
The Spark takes 12 megapixel photos and the Bebop 2 14 megapixels. Both drones are built well and both provide good line of sight flying range, so I gave a check mark for each. The Spark did perform better during the test flight, but I can attest to the fact that in the right conditions, both drones can reach their advertised max distance of 1.2 miles. And I'll just leave it at that. Now, I recommend putting both drones in airplane mode because both are susceptible to reduced range due to outside signal interference in populated areas. Now, both the DJI GO 4 and Free Flight Pro apps are intuitive and I can't really give the edge to either, so they both check the box. I will say that firmware updates are much smoother and faster with Free Flight Pro. The feature set for both drones is very similar with the various flight modes and automated modes available, so another toss up there. I consistently get 20 to 23 minutes per battery with the Bebop 2 and about 14 minutes with the Spark. The DJI Spark has smart batteries though that will discharge to a storage level if not used for a period of time that you can set. The Bebop 2 does not have that feature. I gave the edge to the Bebop 2 over the Spark for how it performs in sports mode. You're going to get a greater top speed while maintaining smooth stabilized footage. The Spark is zippy, but the 2-axis gimbal simply can't handle the increased speed. The Bebop 2 actually has a similar problem when making abrupt movements at high speeds or when panning the camera at a steep angle. Nonetheless, overall, the Bebop 2 is better here. I already mentioned firmware updates, so let's move on to storage. This one is easy because the Spark accepts up to a 64GB SD card and the Bebop 2 only has 8GB of onboard storage and does not accommodate for an SD card. Now, one of the things I mentioned in my full review of the Bebop 2 is that it does not have a low battery return to home failsafe. Since I consider that to be one of the most important safety features a GPS drone should have, I give this one to the Spark since it has that feature. And finally, price. The Bebop 2 is $100 cheaper than the Spark, and based on my experience with both, you get similar value for your money. So I could totally see both drones priced the same way. So in conclusion, after tallying each category, I have to give the DJI Spark a slight edge with an overall score of 8, with the Bebop 2 finishing with 7.5. The results of this sort of quantitative approach matches my expectation going in after real-time usage and ownership. Both drones are very similar, but the DJI Spark is just a little bit better. If you stayed until the end, thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. So after all of that, what do you think? Do you own both drones? Do you own one of the two? Let me know what you think in the comments. Until we meet again, be good to somebody and be good to yourself. I'll see you in the next one. Later.